no, this house is probably worth a million pounds. <laughs> when it was bought, it was probably 2,000. So again, you could say, this house reflects the wealth. And it reflects the wealth in terms of the house next door and the one next door. That they didn't have slaves. They did. By four o'clock, August the 21st, 1893, a large crowd had assembled in the old Carlton burial ground on Waterloo Place. At half past, a woman dressed as the American spirit Columbia stepped up and tugged on a cord, revealing a bronze figure of Abraham Lincoln. What was the 16th President of the United States doing in Edinburgh? The monument was erected as a final resting place for Scottish American soldiers by US Consul Wallace Bruce after a destitute widow complained her late husband, a veteran of the war, was buried in a common grave. An empathetic Wallace spun a campaign into action, reaching out to his transatlantic friends for donations to build a commemorative statue in the capital. When we consider the illustrious list of robber barons who funded the project, it is clear the monument assumed a more politicised status than merely a marker upon a grave. It was a symbol of gesture politics between the US Republicans and their British Liberal counterparts. It conveyed the notion that the American experiment brought about freedom, wealth and opportunity. The men buried here are largely forgotten. We can only now speculate and squabble over what drove them across a dangerous ocean to fight for Lincoln. Was it politics? Religious conviction? Trouble? It was not new that there were sectors of the Scottish community that were sending in petitions. And I'm therefore not surprised that later on in 1846, um, that people were aware of slavery in America and young men would have probably gone on fought. The, the, the point is that, as I said, when Frederick Douglass was here, he was this great spat with the Free Church, mm -hmm. who he felt that if the church was supporting um, abolition, then it was more likely to be abolished in America. When the news broke of Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, the working class in Scotland were torn. On one hand, you had a deeply sympathetic Christian society that was repulsed by slavery, but at the same time, utterly reliant on the wealth produced and jobs it provided. They're saying, oh, it's in the past. We don't need that, to worry about it because we're different today. It, it, the fact is that our attitudes are in, uh, are inherited from the past mm. <laughs> just like other aspects of our culture our religion they, they, they come from the past mm. and, and how are we going to dump historical attitudes and not dump the other attitudes we have mm. you know so we, we, we as I said we, we, we can't change the past but we can change the consequences the truth is Scotland was a pivotal player and in doing so benefited considerably. The, the irony of that statue, it's next door to Hume's ma mausoleum. <laughs> I don't think people don't see the irony yeah, yeah. of the statue. <laughs>